Hey guys, um, a couple of people asked me about my settings in Simplified 3D and the like, so I figured I'd do this quick video here and just run over some stuff and how I do it. Um, so, first off, the big one I do is up here in Tools and Options, I s switch everything <coughs> over to millimeters a second. Um, it's just easier for me. And I started with the Duplicator i3 uh, preset for the WAN hell. Um, if you don't want to do that, you need to make certain that these are all um, correct. And of course, if you've got a model or the like, you can add it here. I've got no idea where you can get them from, though, despite the fact that you know I clearly own the product. Um, you can change your support stuff and the like in here so I actually need to do that so I'm doing it just here and any quality <laughs> settings and the like it's just general stuff that you know can come in handy and of course the other one is you can change your grid line spacing to make it easier to work out um, things like so now when you get in, you'll notice I've got two processors, and this is one of the, as uh, Angus over at Makers Muse and a couple others point out, this is one of the strongest things with um, Simplified 3D, because it lets you do different prints on the same print um, with different settings. So, we'll take a look at this one. Now, I modified this over where I do my print, so we'll go through and we'll look at some general stuff. Um, now, the big ones here, this default printing speed is 60 millimeters a second. You don't want it at that. You want it down at about 40 to begin with. I, this, this is the speed I typically print at. If I need to print really, really detailed prints, I'll drop this down to 20. Um, the reason is slower prints, less jerk, and the like. Um, I've done some tweaking on the actual printer firmware as well to those settings. There's a really great wiki that you can use for that. Um, but we'll go over that later. Um, so on the extruder, obviously well, I've got the nozzle diameter in. My extrusion mod of multiplier is at 0 0.98. Um, that's because I haven't done the calibration on the actual extruder of the printer. I don't have a set of calipers handy at the moment so 0.98's working really really well with um, what I do. Um, the extrusion width, sometimes you may actually want to set this. If you're getting gaps and the like, I've noticed um, occasionally the extrusion width here can come really really in handy. Uh, the ooze control. Now this is... Um, you got to play with it a little, that's all I can really say. Defaults to 1, 1 1.2 is working well for me. Um, the extra restart distance, I've not had any problems leaving it at zero. And I lift every time I do a retraction, it just stops it from doing stringies all the time, uh, or blue, leaving little dots or the like, or traction speed set at 33mm a second. Um, you probably, you can up this, but if you retract too far out, you are actually risking a jam, and I'd pr I just prefer not to. Um, my layer settings, I again, this gets adjusted depending on my print, um, but I typically Solid layers is betw typically between 2 and 5 on both of these. My perimeters depends on the strength I want on the object. Um, typically I'll do either 2 or 3. The most I've done is 4 and that was for some stuff. If I'm printing something on its own, so let's say I had a circular gear or vase or something like that, um, which was hollow or the like, I'd use this, the single outline 
corkscrew printing mode or vase mode. Um, I typically print from the inside out, some people print from the outside in, just depends on what you're after. My first layer height is 90, my width's 100%, but my speed's 50, so if you look at our other speed here, if I was printing at 20 millimeters a second, though, so like I said, I typically actually print at this speed here, 40. That first layer is going down at 20 millimeters a second, and what that does is it helps with the bed adhesion because um, it's slower, gives the plastic a little bit longer to get on the bed and the like. Uh, skirt and brim, now this changes from print to print. Um, the print that's going on around at my parents place at the moment for example it's had a really on one of the, the objects should have set this to uh, zero and put about four outlines on it because what piece has fallen over um, and this would have made it a brim rather than a skirt but I always typically print two skirt outlines the offset from the part I'll vary depending on how much room I'm making and the like sometimes it's one millimeter sometimes it's five sometimes it's ten just depends on if I want it to actually be more part of the model or not um, there's a couple of reasons I do that. One, it primes the nozzle. Two, it lets me check the bed level. Three, it can be used as a brim if needed. A raft, I've not actually printed that much with a raft at the moment. Um, but if you're finding that you're getting a lot of, lot, well, drops, you know, stuff popping off and the like, a raft can come in handy. Um, the prime pillar not ever used um, the ooze shield of not used either um, so can't comment too much on those infill settings again this will change depending on what you're doing um, sometimes I'll use fast honeycomb sometimes I'll just use triangular and of course the amount you're doing changes based on your print. If you've got large flat surface areas like this at times I find having a higher value helps prevent issues um, but then you can also do a sparse infill so you could up this to two and rather than printing infill every layer it'll print it every second layer um, which will speed up a print a bit it just depends on how s strong you want your print and stuff like that but the good thing with this is it can really uh, reduce the print times as well on your support material again this is just well personal choice um, I typically do supports at every two I have a dense support layer one and I'll um, adjust the offset based on the part and the like again and the vertical separation layers found two tends to work really really well but sometimes you need to go three so other times you need to go one but what you've got to you run the risk on one especially with really small parts that it will fuse with the um, object so you, it's just something to be aware of. Temperatures. Now, this is my basic profile. I'll start on for a PLA. I'll start at 215 and then I'll drop to 210 at layer 3. Occasionally, I also drop down to 205 at layer 5 or 50. It just depends on the part. And the reason for that is it's just it's, it gives me higher flow rate low, better adhesion and the like, and then I can back it off a little bit and the like. I've found with the Cocoon Create that without the PID stuff, which I've not done and the like, um, the temperature fluxes a little bit, so setting it 
down at say where some people might at 200 or 190 you're just getting too much of a flux and rather than a nice um, bead that merges properly and the like you start getting um, really thin beads that you get gaps in and just doesn't just looks ugly um, and causes problems heated bed I just tell it to turn on I mean um, there are some people who will once this gets to like a layer a hundred or so um, turn it off and that's because you know once you get so high on the print by rights it really shouldn't matter if you're heating it or not um, I have done some prints where I've dropped the temperature slowly as I go higher up and that has worked um, cooling I just do the normal 2-1 I do the adjust speeds to keep the layers below 15 seconds and I allow it to drop to 20 and that's just because that way it stops a lot of oozing and melting of the plastic on long thin objects and things like that uh, your g-code this is just stock in here um, what I did change in here though is my ending script here which so basically what happens is when I get to the end of a print first it turns off the extruder then it turns off the heated bed then it will move 10 basically moves everything out 10 and then s comes back on the um, X and Y from memory but and then of course it turns off the stepper motor and the fans that's just so that um, if nobody's around the only fan that's running is the side fan and the box fan and there's no risk of fire or anything like that from it um, default printing speed as I said before 40 millimeters a second outline speed is 50% slower than that so it'll print at 20 which allows for a much higher exterior um, your inspilled under speed it'll then these ones you tweak a little bit um, your rapid movements now you need to really go into your firmware and check the settings here because this can't you don't want this faster than that because well it's basically means that you can't work out how fast it's meant to be printing um, I think on my printer it's set at 80 so 60 is fine um, the X is movement speed that's just your up and down speed if you need to shrink or the like you can use this this you need to make certain is correct of course otherwise you're going to have problems um, the price not so much that's just for me to work out how much it's costing me on a print your bridging um, again you this varies a little bit from printer to printer I tend just to leave it to the stock defaults and on advanced now this is where you can get some really tricky stuff going on um, because you could actually use this process for the first say five millimeters and then you may have something where um, it just suddenly becomes a vase or the like and you can tell it to go to, to stop and another process to take over at that point it's just something to be aware of there is a really good tutorial on it by um, the guys who make simplified 3d and I'd highly recommend looking at it because it comes in handy and you'll notice I've got two processes here I've got one running for the big print and one running for my little print um, and again this part you know it's personal behavior if you're finding you're getting a lot of oozing you may want to do a retract um, when it's not crossing open spaces um, just like you may want to turn this on which I find I oh, stopped some oozing I was getting every light every time it moved up a layer if, if it wasn't going straight onto the same print um, 
and it stopped like this little bubble from happening. Um, the tool change and the like, that's just for your stuff. So that's everything that you can really, that's all my settings there. Um, like I said, you need to play with them as you're going though. Um, and I mean, you know, as I said, I've got two running here and I think this one's temperature's wrong again and speeds will be wrong again because I um, didn't notice it until I got around to where the printer is and had a look on it on the laptop next to the printer. Um, but on this one you'll see that they're basically almost the same. They're just slightly different. And when we go prepare to print you get this tell it that it's continuous and see we get a problem because I've not selected something so what we could do in here, edit, select mod, models tell this one that I want it on that is two, okay and those two, prepare to print We can see that this print would take 5 hours and 34 minutes and cost $2.06. The other thing to remember is always check that first layer there. Um, if you see issues, like if by layer 2 also you do not have basically this and the reason that we're seeing two oh, it's taking two layers is this is the first process and this is the second process if you do not have this by the first layer there in all the places you expect to have it then you need to go back out and check your model because you're gonna it means that your model's not flat properly and the like um, and trust me when I say there is no quicker way to really mess up a print than not checking this. Um, other than, well, bed levelling, which is always fun. So, anyway, I hope that um, this was a little bit helpful. If it is, let us know. Anyway, thanks for watching. My name's Rob, and I'll catch you next time.